Hello strangers. First things first, when you write a script, make sure you save it. Check it. Check it again. And check it again and again and again. I've written this script three times now. In case you're wondering, I have a rough script on my screen that I'm reading from when I do my videos. My main points are here and I stick fairly close to them so I don't trail off. So, I said ages ago on the group chat that I found the Sir John Sloan Museum in London, which is round the corner of where I used to work. Sir Sloan was a legend. He was the architect behind the Palace of Westminster, where my government is, and he designed the Bank of England. He was also a hoarder of historical artefacts. His old house is now a museum, and it is a fascinating place. There's an Egyptian sarcophagus in the basement, Greek statues and statuettes dotted around the house, and paintings salvaged from palaces in the Middle East. Unfortunately, when you enter the house, staff ask you to turn off your phone, so I couldn't film any of it. So instead, I'm going to talk to you about the British Museum, which isn't a bad substitute, really. Wow, the opening reel was late in the video, wasn't it? Anyway, it's surprisingly difficult to film the British Museum, so we'll have to make do. I love the British Museum. I used to work just down the road from here, and it is a brilliant place to just wander around and lose yourself in the many time periods. I could bang on about how great it is for ages, but one, you don't need me to do that for you, you probably know how great it is already, and two, I'm a killjoy. I want to talk about the museum's biggest controversy, so I find it fascinating, frustrating and complex. The most controversial part of the British Museum is also my favourite. Here are the Elgin Marbles. The marbles were part of the Greek Pantheon, the shape of which this room is based off. Lord Elgin bought the marbles in 1701 from Ottomans, who were occupying Greece at the time. It took Lord Elgin almost 10 years to chip the marbles through the walls and then ship them back to England. When they arrived, Lord Elgin discovered he had gone bankrupt and sold the treasures to the British government who had told him not to bring the marbles to British soil in the first place, who in turn sold them to the British Museum. Years later, Greece liberated itself from Ottoman's rule and asked for their marbles back. The British Museum said no. The Greeks argued that as Lord Elgin bought the marbles from an official of the Ottoman Empire who had no right to sell them, the transaction is null and void. The Greeks also say that visitors to the Pantheon can appreciate the marbles more if they were discover as they were intended and in their intended location, rather than the museum on the other side of the world. They've also offered to buy the British Museum of casts and replicas, and pointed out that other countries around the world have turned their marbles, including Sweden, Germany, America, and even the Vatican. The Greeks claim the marbles will be better protected, as staff members of the British Museum have damaged their marbles while trying to clean them. And finally, perhaps the most important point the Greeks make, is that a vast majority of British public, myself included, want the marbles returned. Now, I love the Elgin marbles. I think they're fascinating and magnificent, and yes, I would miss them if they were gone, but I know the right thing to do is to send them home. Stephen Fry and George Clooney have also voiced for the marbles to be returned. Even when the marbles first arrived in the country, there was an outcry. Lord Byron, the famous romantic poet, called Lord Elgin a common vandal. The United Nations Ed Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization have offered to assist in the trade between Britain and Greece and offer as a mediator. Unfortunately, it looks as if the marbles won't ever be returned. The British Museum has issued various reasons why they won't return the artefacts. First, they say that marbles are safer in the British Museum than in the Pantheon. This kind of makes sense, admittedly. The Pantheon was bombed heavily in World War II and has been damaged since by looters, tourists, treasure hunters. The Greek response to this is that they will improve security or house the marbles in a safer location. The second reason the British Museum won't return the marbles is that they say the transaction was considered legal at the time and the time of objection has passed and hence the marbles are legally the property of Britain. This statement is highly disputed between all the countries involved. This statement is highly disputed between all the countries involved. The British Museum said not only are the marbles national treasures of England, they're also world's treasures, therefore no one has ownership of it, which counteracts their previous statement. Thirdly, there is a British law that says that any item that enters the museum's collection legally cannot leave. 
that's very creepy when you think about it. As if the artifacts have been given a life sentence and they're prisoners. Now, interestingly, the British Museum have broken this rule. In 2008, they returned the Australian Aborigine cremational ashes to Tasmania, and earlier this year, they promised to return stolen artifacts to Ethiopia. How is this marbles any different, British Museum? Come on! I mean, the real reason the museum doesn't want to return the Elgin marbles is because they're money earners. They're one of the most attractive artifacts in the museum. I first went into the British Museum to see the Elgin marbles. Although entry to the British Museum is free, and entry to Elgin Marbles is free, you can literally just wander in off the street. More people in the museum means more charitable donations in donation boxes and more money spent in the gift shop. This is a perfect example of Britain's sketchy background. We go to another culture, we invade it, we steal all the artefacts and plunder, and then we try to ignore the consequences. It's not something we like talking about or admitting to. Now, what really annoys me is that in the British Museum, the only hint of the marble's complex ownership is this sign on your screen now. I'll give you a moment to read it. Yeah, that tells me literally next to nothing. Now this is obviously pretty bloody bad, but in the modern world, things are improving. We should always use history as a benchmark to improve ourselves and apologise for our past actions. Strangers, I'll see you next week. Hopefully with a lighter subject. Take care.